Good morning, it's March 19th, and this is To My Liberal Friends. Well, I'm old enough to remember when there were only three channels on my TV, and sometime around midnight, the test pattern came on, and TV was done for the day. My, how things have changed. Those three channels have been joined by a whole lot more, and none of them sign off for the night. CNN was the first cable news station, and it was extremely popular. In the beginning, they reported the news and did so in a fairly unbiased manner. And that was in 1980, and Ronald Reagan defeated Jimmy Carter. They had free reign over cable news until 1996, and then we saw the advent of Fox News and MSNBC. Suddenly, CNN had to adopt a new strategy. They needed opinion shows to counter what was being shown on the two new upstarts. Today, we have Fox News, which is decidedly conservative, although I think Brett Baer provides a pretty unbiased show. The shows at night are very conservative, and I've chosen not to watch Jesse Waters, Laura Ingraham, and especially Sean Hannity. Over at MSNBC, they've gone far to the left. Jen Psaki is simply a Biden apologist. Joy Reid sees everything she disagrees with as racist. Rachel Maddow is ultra left, and Laura Sodano should be working at the Democratic National Committee. Over at CNN, they've tried to adapt, and we have seen multiple shakeups at the network. Aaron Burnett, Anderson Cooper, Caitlin Collins, and Abby Phillips pretend to be nonpartisan, but anyone listening to them knows they're avant garde Democrats. The public has this menu of choices, and the ratings for cable news show clearly that the liberals are losing the fight. Fox News is the number one ranked cable news show. They well outpace MSC and CNN, basically combining them, and CNN has fallen below such networks as the Food Channel, TLC, HGTV, and even the Hallmark Channel. I guess viewers would rather watch feel-good movies as opposed to gloom and doom on CNN when the Republicans have a foothold in government. Notably, Fox closed out the first month of 2024 with 98 of the top 100 cable news telecasts for the month, while the competition on CNN netted only one, and MSNBC has zero. Fox remained cable news most watched act across total day viewership and second in prime time behind only ESPN. Well, since the conservative channel is outpacing the two left-leaning ones, it's forced liberals to adopt a new strategy. Enter big tech and the giants like Facebook and Google. It is the subject of a case before the Supreme Court yesterday. Two lower courts had placed restrictions on the communications between the White House and Silicon Valley. And this is a crucial case because social media has become such a pervasive element in our society today. A recent study showed that 62% of adults admit to getting their news from social media. That's shocking. Why? Yesterday, the justices questioned the lawyers for two hours. They were combining two cases, the National Rifle Association versus Bullo, and the NRA argues that Maria Volo, the head of New York's Department of Financial Services, violated the First Amendment by pressuring banks and insurance companies to cut ties with a gun rights group based on its political advocacy. In Murphy v. Missouri, several states and social media users sued President Joe Biden's administration, claiming it had violated the First Amendment by pressuring the major social media platforms into suppressing what the administration dreamed as misinformation about the COVID-19 vaccines and the 2020 election. Now, I'm not as concerned with the first case as I am with the second. It's this case that by the administration put great pressure on social media companies to delete some information and toe the line on others. Lawyers presented evidence of a heated exchange between White House officials and Facebook employees. The administration was angry that certain information was being allowed on the site, and they warned that they were, quote, considering our options on what to do about it, end quote. That's a veiled threat. Those words should send a chilling tremor to everyone. Democrats will agree with the Biden administration in this instance, but what about when another administration is in office? Will they think it's okay for those in power to bully social media sites about what they can allow to be posted? I've watched these cases moving through the court system. As I said, two lower courts have found against the Biden administration in Murphy v. Missouri. Justice Alito seemed to side with the plaintiffs when he said, quote, it's got these big clubs available to it, and so it's treating Facebook and these other platforms like they're subordinates, end quote. Justice Catania Jackson Brown countered by saying, your quote, your view has the First Amendment hamstringing the federal government in a significant way in the most important time periods. Well, the real question is how far can the government go in censoring views it decides is in disinformation? I think in the post-COVID era, we have found that much of the information that the government decided was disinformation turned out to be true information. The claim that we have to follow the science was their mantra and later they found that the person making that claim the loudest, Dr. Anthony Fauci, was in fact making up the science as he went. 
There's another case out there, and today the court will hear the case of Sylvia Gonzalez. She was elected to the city council of Castle Hills, Texas, a small town. This did not sit well with the mayor, J.R. Trevino. Ms. Gonzalez had ran on an anti-establishment campaign, and once elected, she started a petition to have the city manager replaced. He was introduced by another citizen at her first council meeting. The video of the meeting shows that at the end, she inadvertently picked up the petition as she gathered her papers. The mayor asked her about the document and, and said, where is it? Well, she looked in her folder and handed it back. What the mayor then did was preposterous. He had the, her arrested, a 70-year-old grandmother for this, and it was a clear case of political retaliation for her efforts against the city manager, who was a close friend of the mayor. Now, in my view, government can certainly espouse their views, but others have the same right. It goes back to my concern about so many adults getting their news from social media. You fight disinformation with more information. You allow full discourse of ideas and allow the public to decide what they want to accept and believe. And the court's in a difficult position in these cases, and we'll have to try and thread the needle on protecting against what some will call disinformation and protecting our rights under the First Amendment which is the most cherished right we have in this country. We are free to speak our minds. It's been to my liberal friends. Thanks for listening. And if you enjoy it, subscribe.